Hey guys, it's Adrenus coming to you with another tutorial. This time, if you couldn't guess from the sexy Kirito fanboy outfit, it's going to be about everyone's favorite weapon, swords. Everybody uses them, everybody started with them, and Bandai seems to give us most free skills surrounding them. So today we're going to break down one build around the Kirito Burst and the Yuki Burst, for those of us who have lucked out and got the Dual Burst set up. And the other build is going to be almost exclusively free skills centered around the one banner skill underworld UGO, which so many of us love to run. It's going to be exclusively additional damage and skills that just tack stuff onto our normal hit and of course our skills overall. So we're going to be using the Taurus boss for this just because it's waves and waves of stuff that we can hack and slash. So real quick, I'm going to show you this first build. You can see the passives I'm running. Everything except for that one Yui skill has been free at one point and we are going to run the event free skill for Yui just because it gives us the ability to use Rush if we didn't luck out or didn't attempt to pull on the Awakening banner. So you may ask yourself when you're looking at this video, why is Koharu running Axe? Not K-Hammer, not Daggers, not Extra Slash, whatever, to help us through this fight. The reason why is Sword's number one weakness in my eyes is that it does not inherently have a lot of crit rate. Rapiers, Axes, a lot of these other weapons are going to have a lot of crit built in. Swords, however, does a lot of white damage. What Axes is going to allow us to do, and I will show you the specific skills as well, is it's going to allow us to throw things like Tactical Argo and Young Yu-Gi-Oh to put on a whole lot of crit rate based off of our hit points. It's also going to allow me to throw on skills like Mitch Ma Mismatch Silica or her Kirito counterpart that will give me damage based exclusively off my hit points that will be tacked onto not only my skills, but more importantly in the second build that I'll be running, my normal hits. Now, you can see my normal hits are running upwards of 10,000. That, in this build particularly, is primarily off of Koharu's Axe skills. Now, what I'm doing here, you'll see I'm triggering the chain using Fire, Slash, Wind, Wind. What I've done is I've put Yuki on Burst. That way I can get an additional Wind skill in case I were to miss my skill that I'm using for the Wind Qualifier when I don't have Switch. Now, the double edge of this is you can also trigger Yuki for the crit rate, a little extra crit, and then we can do burst, use the free Kirito for fire damage modification, and then again the fire burst in order to trigger that as my last rotation there you can see. Now on this second build this one is a little more geared towards our free-to-play players. This runs, and I will show you the passives immediately after this fight, this triggers around all of my Yu-Gi-Oh, Alice, Aegil, any of the skills that attack on additional damage. What I'm doing here is I'm running Cool Swordsman, Kirito, in order to up my crit rate just a little bit more on top of my Axe crit rate buffs. And I'm running Underworld Yu-Gi-Oh for additional damage. All my passives are then tacking on an additional 8-900 damage on top of Underworld Yu-Gi-Oh's buff, which is based off of my defense. Now, the higher your defense, static, if you have any defense passives, anything like that, anything like maybe Heathcliff or the other Alicization passive that tack on additional damage, if you've rolled on any of those or been so fortunate, are just going to add a little bit of extra damage onto this build. Now, these are also going to buff your Kirito Burst. So we're going to keep those in this rotation just for the AoE damage and the ability to tack on burn because if you're running skills like Vet Kirito or Bitter Black Kirito, you can, again, get additional damage and just slowly watch that normal hit modifier go higher and higher and higher. Now, you'll notice when I manage to get fortunate enough to get all of my buffs stacked up at the same time, I'm getting hits upwards of 17,000. That, again, is featuring my Axe numbers tacked on top of Underworld Yu-Gi-Oh, tacked on top of my passives, and you can really generate some really good damage, especially for trash mobs, for farming, for clearing waves, things like that. You can generate stuff that will just one, two, three shot normal mobs, and it's going to do some pretty sick damage on bosses too, which is going to help you when you're running low on SP if you haven't had a chance to max those higher weapon proficiency points so that you have big damage while you're waiting on your meter to fill. Now, Here's the skill setup itself. You can see I kept the Kirito Burst just for, like I said, the burn, the additional aggro. I kept the Black Swordsman's Memory for the bonus damage to the Kirito Burst. I kept Cool Swordsman for that crit rate. Gives me about the same amount of time that I have for Underworld Yu-Gi-Oh! So I can up my crit rate, up my additional damage, and hold that extra crit for that entire time. Now on passives, we of course have our Shining Gem of the setup, 
which is the UE. If you're not running this, you should be. In every build you have for the bonus attack and the bonus hit points, it's going to work for everything if you don't have an awakening skill. Golden Knight Alice is going to give us a little bit of additional damage and some flat attack, which isn't always our most preferred type of attack, but, you know, hey, sometimes we have to work with what we have. Icy Swordsman Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to give us more additional damage and a little bit of hit points returned when monsters die. And then we have Returning Seaman Aegil. Everybody knows what this bad boy does. Additional damage and crit on normal attacks, which is essential on an additional damage build because it's just going to make you see that much more yellow damage, which is what we want. It's going to make the fight go faster. Swords is always about damage per second. It is not about the heavy hitting skills, especially in the additional damage builds. I'm going to give you a quick glimpse of what Koharu's running, just so you can kind of see what her setup is. I am running the Kirito instead of Mismatch Silica because of the longer buff duration. If you have it, use it. If not, use what you've got. Now let's talk about my favorite perk, which is weapon proficiency. Sword training, number one in the tree for a reason. It's going to give you 10% regular attack damage. What this is going to do for your additional attack damage builds is going to build that normal hit. It is crucial, especially if you're centering a build around things like Underworld Yu-Gi-Oh. Take that baby to 10. Chivalry is going to give attack and defense. It's flat. It's not a lot. Do it as you can or just get it to 5 and move forward. Swords Blow. What this is going to do is going to give you 5% attack and defense right after a successful switch. Most of us are running burst on switch. What that's going to do, you're going to hit with that switch, and then it's going to up the damage on your burst. Basic stance, we all know how I feel about that. Fill that baby up when you have time. Right now, especially if you're new, don't waste your RC on that. It's too precious. Come back to this. It's only flat attack. Full Strike is going to increase damage to all opponents that are slashing. This is money for swords. Take this baby to 10. Mark of the Warrior. It's going to give you 2% of your hit points back on a kill. This is wonderful for farming. It's wonderful for board missions where you're murdering those squirrels or anything where there's lots of mobs. It's going to give you just a little bit of extra oomph to stay alive in the fight. And it's going to be great for skills like E-Silica, things like that, where your hit points are required to carry on the fight and to keep the buff up. Battle Instinct, just another advanced portion of basic stance. Do it as you're able. No rush. Don't break your neck trying to get to it. Don't dump all your RC into it right now. Survival Instinct, it's hit points, it keeps you alive, it keeps you going, and it just means you got to lose a little bit more to keep those 75% or more skills active. However, if you're just starting out and you're new to swords, take this to five and move forward. It's not as big a deal if you're not running axes or anything HP-based. Now, Combination is another one of these we want to take to 10 as soon as we're able. The reason why, it's going to buff the switch 10%, which is going to work in conjunction with that skill we talked about earlier. Weapon Knowledge. Now, we run this one of two ways. If you are focusing swords exclusively, because that's what you have and that's what you want, run this to level 5 and move on down the tree. Come back to it later. If you are trying to get strong in everything, take this to 10 before you move forward. So, I personally took this to 10 before I move forward because I don't main swords, and it's still going to benefit me in swords, but it's also going to benefit me in axes and rapiers. Now, switch charge, again, take this to level 5. If you're really feeling like you've got a lot of expensive skills, take this baby to 10 before you move on to sword secret. If you feel like you've got mostly cheap skills and you're not having any trouble mitigating your SP, take this to 5 and let's move on to sword secret, which will eventually be 10% bonus damage exclusively to your sword build, which is money if that's what you're centering your play style around. If you want to be that next Kirito, Sword's Secret is where you want to spend your RCL. Now guys, as always, you have to spend these at your own discretion. Don't chase down too far down the tree. I personally recommend build a little bit in everything, but you want one thing to be really good before you move on to others. So it's worth it to unlock all the tiers of the tree before you move on to another weapon. Thanks, guys, for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you have a happy new year and a great holiday season. If you have any comments, please feel free to drop them in below. I appreciate all your support on my tutorial videos. And, uh, again, if you have anything you'd like to see in future videos, just let me know. Take care.